What's up fellow video editor? If you're here because you want to know how to create a new project in Premiere Pro the right way, then you're in the right place. Here I am on the home screen for Premiere Pro and I'm gonna go ahead and click on new project. I'll just give you a tip, please stay descriptive with your project names so that you can tell what you're gonna open up before you open it. So I'm just gonna name this new project example because that's exactly what we're doing. Now once you've given it a name, just choose a location for your save file. Might as well make it somewhere easy. For me, I always put them all in the same folder, which is on my hard disk drive in a very specific folder that backs up to the cloud. I'm using Google Drive to back that up. And next we have this section here with the three tabs, General, Scratch Disks and Ingest Settings. So here in the General tab, under the Video Rendering and Playback section, the option for your renderer. Everyone will have at least this option, which is Mercury Playback Engine Software only. If you have the option to do something other than that, choose it. It's going to be a lot faster. In fact, mine says CUDA because I have an NVIDIA graphics card. This extra option is afforded to you by a graphics card. So if you have an AMD graphics card, this will say OpenCL. In any case, if you do have this option, the only reason you would choose the software only option is if you were troubleshooting. But we're not doing that, so I'm going to choose the faster option. In the video section, we're going to leave this on timecode. This just has to do with the way the numbers are shown on the timeline. These other options are for very specific applications, such as for film. For us though, we're just going to leave it on the default timecode and we're going to leave audio on audio samples as well. As you can see, you can switch it to milliseconds, but audio samples is the default. We'll just leave it on there. In the capture section, capture format, you know, it's funny, I heard this rumor where if you set it to HDV, it'll be higher quality. Well, let me just tell you now, that's literally wrong. The capture section is all about capturing video using Premiere Pro. Now 99% of everybody out there are going to use a better program to capture video because they're out there. You can find better programs for free like OBS or with NVIDIA you have the NVIDIA GeForce Experience. In any case, it doesn't matter if I leave this on DV or HDV. It won't make any difference because we're not capturing video with Premiere Pro. And in the color management section here, where it says HDR graphics, white nits. Okay, so HDR means high dynamic range. And this will only apply to you if you have very specialized equipment. I'm talking tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment for the right monitor to display HDR graphics, as well as a graphics card that's able to transmit HDR graphics. Well, basically the nits are just the brightness for that. And you would know what brightness if you paid tens of thousands of dollars for the, the equipment, you'd know which one of these to use. What we put here doesn't matter because we're not using HDR graphics. This checkbox on the bottom here says display the project item name and label color for all instances. We're going to leave this unchecked. It just changes a specific behavior when you rename things. The name will be applied all over your project. If you're new to Premiere Pro, just leave this unchecked because it gives you a lot more flexibility. You can have different colors for multiple instances of the same clips and multiple names. I'll just say that unless you specifically know that you want to check this so that every instance of the same clip has the same name and label, just leave this unchecked. Next, we'll head over to the Scratch Disks tab. This tab is very useful in case you have multiple disk drives. Personally, I have a solid state drive and a hard disk drive. SSDs, the solid state drives, are much faster than hard disk drives. And that actually helps a lot when you're trying to preview your video. And on the other end of the spectrum, hard disk drives are great for long-term storage because they usually have a lot more space than SSDs. Well, at least for cheaper. So I have both. My D drive is a hard disk drive, which is where I like to put the save files. And my video previews and audio previews, I usually set those to my C drive, which is my SSD. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And as you can see, I set them both to my C drive. So long story short, use your fastest drive for the video previews and audio previews. Premiere Pro creates a whole bunch of files as you're using it. So it really does matter where you put those files. Another thing that you might want to note is the location of your auto saves. For me, I have it going into the same folder, which is great because that gets backed up. 
If you have just one drive, you might as well leave everything on same as project or put it in a specific location if you care about that. Next, we'll head over to the ingest settings tab. Now this tab is really only useful if you know what you're doing. So ingest means to do something with the media as soon as you import the file. So let's say I'm importing a video file and I wanted to create a copy. What it would do is it would import a video and then create a copy and drop it somewhere. Like in this case, it would drop it in the same folder as my project save, which is this one, right? And you can choose with or without verification to make sure that the copy is a valid file. You can also transcode to a different format. You can also create proxies, which is something that's very helpful if you're using footage that's way too difficult for your computer to run. But if you want to learn more about proxies, check out the channel or subscribe because we will be releasing a video all about proxies later on. Long story short, proxies are a tool that you use in order to let you edit videos that are a higher resolution than you can normally handle. So if you're using a slower computer, but you do have to edit a 4K video, you can achieve this through proxies. Whereas if you didn't use proxies, you would get a really tough time trying to edit 4K videos on a slow computer. And next we have the copy and create proxies, which does a combination of the copy and create proxies option. Normally you won't be using this. So in summary, basically all you got to do is give it a name, select a location, make sure you're on the right renderer, leave everything else the same, the scratch disks, make sure you put your video and audio previews on the fastest drives, and then click OK. And that's it. Before you go though, please leave a thumbs up if you found this video helpful. There are many people with this question, so help them find this video if you were helped by this. Also, subscribe to our channel if you want newer how-tos. We release new videos all the time, so make sure you don't miss those. See you guys in the next video.